Hi there, this is Brother Randy back with one more session for you. This will be the last one. And this is found in a verse that's troubled many people over the years who don't understand allegory or symbolic language in the Bible. This is in the Psalm 139. It's a Psalm by David. And David is talking about running from God. Now we know finally nobody can run from God. Now, David ran from God when he sinned and committed murder over there with Bathsheba, but he didn't run, run very far, did he? And maybe David was thinking about that. So in Psalm 139 and verse 7, David says, Where shall I go from thy spirit? Where shall I flee from thy presence? Well, we can say nobody, nowhere. He said, if I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. And then he talks on about running from God, running from God. Now, when David said, I make my bed in heaven, he said, God, you are in hell. Now, let me explain this to you in simple language. If you are familiar with the Psalms especially, over and over, the writers use symbolic language. David talks about God riding on the wings of the wind. Now, surely we know that God is not standing on the wind riding. He talks about God rides the clouds. Surely God doesn't sit out on a cloud and ride through. This is symbolic language. Over and over and over, the Bible is filled with this kind of language. It's, it's language of allegory, language of simile, language of illustration. And when David talk, talks about he'll find God in hell, he's talking about that the thought of God is in hell in the minds of every unsaved sinner who's there. Remember the rich man in Lazarus 16 died and went to hell and he's, he's praying in hell to God. Now, God is not there, but symbolically in the thoughts of everyone who's there, they, God is there in a symbolic way. So you don't have to worry about God going down to hell and standing in the fire and burning. That's ridiculous. Never think that thought. In symbolic, allegorical language, this is how this psalm is speaking. And so, Take that with you. When you read through Psalms and you read these thoughts, that's overwhelming. Overwhelming. If I run from God and go around a corner, he's there waiting for me. Well, God is in heaven, but his presence and his thoughts are there and they will always be there. Now, I want to tell you one more thing in closing this little message on allegory or symbolic language. David, uh, Saul and 2 Corinthians 12 talked about he had a thorn in the flesh and he said it was the messenger of Satan. Now he's not saying the devil is in his flesh. He's saying this thing hurt like the devil himself was doing it. But he said, God put this in my flesh. Why? To keep me humble with all the great things. You know, David had seven visions and revelations of heaven more than anybody in the Bible. And he had them, and he wrote about every one of them in his 14 letters found in the New Testament. So remember, a lot of symbolic language, and when it's symbol, if you can't figure it out, ask yourself, is God using allegorical language? And it'll help you tremendously in understanding the Bible. So remember, don't take symbolic language literally because God did not inspire it to be written that way. I hope that'll be a blessing to some of you. Hey, when you read the Bible, when it's not symbolic, you want to take that literally and live by it and let it be a guiding light to you. Say, I'll never see you, all of you, so we'll meet in heaven. Keep that in mind. I won't be in a wheelchair. I won't be hurting. We'll meet in heaven. I've been telling all my Christian friends to meet me at the Benjamin Gate. You know, there's 12 gates around heaven. One of them is called the Benjamin Gate. This is in the last two chapters of Revelation. The name of 
the, the, the name of the apostles of the Lamb are there. And my, isn't that wonderful? And their names are there, and the names of the 12 tribes of Israel are there. Meet me at the gate named Benjamin. Why have you picked that one? Because Benjamin means sorrow and suffering. And that's how this life is, sorrow and suffering. But we'll meet at a gate where all tears will be wiped away. Will you meet me there? If you've been saved and born again, if you're just a Baptist, you'll probably get a front seat in hell. If you're just a Church of England, if you're just a, uh, if you're just one of the chamenta, one of the congregation, and you never, if you just had water sprinkled on your head when you were a babe, and that's all you've got, you won't make it. Jesus Christ, personal Lord and Savior, living in your saved soul. I leave you wet. We're going to say goodbye. God be with you till we meet for the last time.